Hi, Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Fauquier County Schools, with another edition of One Hard Question. Uh, this week's hard question comes from Martine, who asks the following. Uh, I'm interested in how students learn and read the definition of intentional learning online. I originally took a workshop on this concept, but left my job and now it's behind. What do you think of the trends of the new trends and concepts in teaching strategies and philosophies? What do you think the most constructive what are the most constructive theories? This is a hard question, I hope. Thank you in advance for your answer, Martine. Uh, this is a great question, and it's not a typical one hard question, but it's very good. And fortunately, it's sort of we're right in the wheelhouse of not only the, the ongoing conversation in Fauquier County, but also uh, at the state level. What, what's, what we're seeing happening in the state right now is most definitely a shift uh, away from this um, multiple choice uh, teach uh, snippets of information and you know hope students are able to spit the information out um, very little application uh, very very little processing just the teacher is sort of the talking head the conveyor of information and the students are the receptors okay so that's the model that's been in Virginia for the last you know uh, decade or so two decades but what we're seeing is a shift now from a, more of an intentional learning model or intentional learning design and what that means is don't you know you should get freaked out by the concept uh, it's not a, a there's no conspiracy it's just it's the idea that students need to take ownership of their own learning ultimately if kids are really going to truly going to learn and internalize what they're what they're learning in the classroom they have to take ownership over it they have to be motivated to learn it um, they, they have to be self-directed uh, so how do you get there? Well, the first thing that has to happen is with intentional learning, the teacher needs to make shift from being the, again, conveyor of information and the, the sort of the talking head to more of a, a coach slash mentor uh, model, and where they're they're uh, allowing students to question or encouraging students to question, to make connections like in cause and effect cause and effect type relationships to reflect on what they've learned, to, to collaborate with, work with classmates and talk about uh, what, they're, what they're learning, um, to teach classmates, um, to create, we call this uh, project-based learning. You know, there's something to be said and something extremely important uh, related to the concept of, you know, when students learn something, it's important that they're able to demonstrate and show that they've learned it. Because once they do that, then it's really internalized. Once they're able to, I'm going to, you know, a, a students, the way students and adults operate, if I can teach you and show you what I've learned it, through a, a project or a, a, or a whatever, then it's internalized. It's, it's there to stay. That's extremely important. So we want, we want to develop students who are, are questioners, who are making connections, who are able to reflect uh, apply, create, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And don't get me wrong, uh, lecture is still, according to Marzano, lecture is still uh, the most um, profound or results-oriented way to teach students. In other words, it's it's in Marzano's study. There's nine instructional strategies. The number one strategy is direct instruction, like lecture. The problem is we overuse it. We use it too much. Um, we should be using lots of different strategies. There's, there's always going to be a time and, and, and the need in a classroom to just lecture and share information. That's, that, there's always going to be that need, but there's plenty of other different strategies that can be used in, in addition to that. And many of those relate directly to intentional learning, students taking ownership of their own learning, you know, students being, and that, that motivates students um, when they're able to do that. Uh, and we can get there, and that's and not to say we're there now. We're not. We, we have a long way to go. I think we are making incremental steps. But a, a really good example of this is, and something that there's been a little pushback related to, is are the science fair projects. You know, we've we we made the uh, rather bold step this year of requiring a, a you know a science fair project from middle school students, and some people didn't like it. You know, some people uh, parents were were, and I get it. I mean, it's, they were. You know, not crazy about the idea of having this requirement or this graded uh, project, but you know, it's, in my mind, it's a lot better than giving worksheets uh, and, and a multiple choice test. Uh, much rather have them actually create a project and then present it 
than than you know do, taking a test or doing a worksheet. I, I just they're going to internal they're going to remember that. Now, that's one tiny example, by the way, the, among many examples. But you know, intentional learning is um, it, it, the most important piece, and I'll just re reiterate is that you know students take ownership of their own learning and they they are um, they're self motivated and they're self directed and um, this is a, a major shift and as I said we still have a long way to go we're not we're not there uh, but we are making incremental steps to move closer to this and the states you know the states with us the state is um, a lot of good stuff you know uh, articulation coming out of the state as far as where they'd like to see assessment go, for example, you know, more authentic assessing of learning is, you know, uh, is important. That's that's something that the state is pushing for. So that's that's good. That's all good stuff. So anyway, thanks for the question. Have a great rest of the week.